I don't know. I might give it a shot because I sort of have my, uh, I don't have my headphones hooked up. I just have the outside speakers. It might pick up hats. So I think I might give it a shot, but, uh, anywho, uh, bear that in mind. Yeah, and, uh, once again, if you want to check out the YouTube clips, uh, you just go to, uh, go to YouTube, and then my channel is, uh, Charles Lamson's webcam video and uh, check that out or a real quick way to find it is just uh, Google Charles Lamson YouTube and um, I think it's one or two down uh, the YouTube channel you'll see the blog talk channel and then the YouTube channel and then my Facebook uh. yeah I just want to say hi too to all the people I just friended on Facebook recently um, Apparently uh, a lot of people on Facebook are following the show, and I uh, just want to say hi to you guys out there, and uh, thanks for listening, and keep listening. Uh, Alright, but let's uh, delve a little bit deeper into this Sir Francis Bacon Shakespeare Rosicrucian mystery here. Uh, Bear with me one second here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, the Rosicrucians and other secret societies of the 17th century used watermarks as mediums for the convey. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Uh, no reasonable doubt remains that the Masonic Order is the direct outgrowth of the secret societies of the Middle Ages. Nor can it be denied that Freemasonry is permeated by the symbolism and mysticism of the ancient and medieval worlds. Sir Francis Bacon knew the true secret of Masonic origin. And there is no reason to suspect that he concealed this knowledge in cipher and cryptogram. Bacon is not to be regarded solely as a man, but rather as the focal point between an invisible institution and a world which was never able to distinguish between the messenger and the message which he promulgated. Uh, let's see here. The organization lost it. Uh, I don't know. It's... What? Yeah. Uh, mainly P. Hall likes to go into a bunch of boring stuff in this book, but uh, evidence points to the existence of a group of wise and illustrious freighters. Um, Latin for father, fathers, who assumed the responsibility of publishing and preserving for future generations the choicest of the secret books of the ancients, together with certain other documents which they themselves had prepared, that future members of their fraternity might not only identify these volumes, but also immediately note the significant passages, words, chapters, or sections therein. They created a symbolic alphabet of hieroglyphic designs. By means of a certain key and order, the discerning few were thus enabled to find that wisdom by which a man is raised to an illumined life. The tremendous import of the Baconian mystery is daily becoming more apparent. Sir Francis Bacon was a link in that great chain of minds which has perpetuated the secret doctrine of antiquity from its beginning. The secret doctrine is a doctrine is concealed in his cryptic writings. The search for this divine wisdom is the only legitimate motive for the effort to decode the cryptograms. Masonic research might discover much of value if it would turn its attention to certain volumes published during the 16th and 17th centuries, which bear the stamp and signet of that secret society whose members first established modern Freemasonry, but themselves remained as an intangible group controlling and directing the activities of the outer body. Uh, there's a book called The Unknown History and Lost Rituals of Free... Oh, wait, no, 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 take that back. Okay, The Unknown History and Lost Rituals of Freemasonry may be rediscovered in the symbolism and cryptograms of the Middle Ages. Freemasonry is the bright and glorious sun of a mysterious and hidden father. Once again, I'm taking this from Manly P. Hall's The Secret Teachings of All Ages. It cannot trace its parentage 
because that origin is obscured by the veil of the superphysical and the mystical. The Great Folio of 1623, uh, yeah, that's like the whole... That's like the whole work of Shakespeare, Shakespeare's plays, uh, or Sir Francis Bacon's plays, whatever you want to call it, say, call it, say whatever. Uh, the Great Folio of 1623 is a veritable treasure of Masonic lore and symbolism, and the time is at hand when the great work should be accorded the consideration which it, it is due, which is its due. Though Christianity shattered the material organization of the pagan mysteries, it could not destroy the knowledge of supernatural power which the pagans possessed. Therefore, it is known that the mysteries of Greece and Egypt were secretly perpetuated through the early centuries of the church and later by being clothed in the symbolism of Christianity were accepted as elements of that faith. Sir Francis Bacon was one of those who had been entrusted with the perpetuation and dissemination of the arcana of the superphysical originally in the possession of the pagan hierophants, and to attain, attain that end either formulated by the fraternity of R.C., the Rosicrucians, or was admitted into an organization already existing under that name and became one of its principal representatives. For some reason not apparent to the uninitiated, there has been a continued and consistent effort to prevent the unraveling of the Baconian scheme. Whatever the power may be which continually blocks the efforts of investigators, it is as unremitting now as it was immediately following Bacon's death, and those attempting to solve the enigma still feel the weight of its resentment. A misunderstanding world has ever persecuted those who understood the secret workings of nature seeking in every conceivable manner to exterminate the custodians of this divine wisdom. Sir Francis Bacon's political prestige was finally undermined, and Sir Walter Raleigh met a shameful fate because their transcendental knowledge was considered dangerous. The forging of Shakespeare's handwriting, the foisting of fraudulent portraits and death masks upon a gullible public. Sir Francis Bacon, the first PR man, the PR man for the English language, uh, who knows, but um, Bernays could have taken a few notes from him, though. The fabrication of spurious biographies, the mutilation of books and documents, the destruction of rendering illegible of tablets and inscriptions containing cryptographic messages have all compounded the difficulties attendant upon the solution of the Bacon-Shakespeare-Rosicrucian riddle. Uh, let's see here. The cryptic writings of Francis Bacon constitute one of the most powerful, tangible elements in the mysteries of transcendentalism and symbolic philosophy. Apparently, many years must yet pass before an uncomprehending world will appreciate the transcending genius of that mysterious man who wrote the Novum Organum, who sailed his little ship far into the unexplored sea of learning through the pillars of Hercules and whose ideals for a new civiliz civilization are magnificently expressed in the utopian dream of the new Atlantis. Was Sir Francis Bacon a second Prometheus? Did his great love for the people of the world and his pity for their ignorance cause him to bring the divine fire from heaven concealed within the contents of a printed page, the con contents of a printed page. In all probability, the keys to the Baconian riddle will be found in classical mythology. Baconian riddle. He who understands the secret of the seven-rayed god will comprehend the method employed by Bacon to accomplish his monumental labor. Aliases were assumed by him in accordance with the attributes and order of the members of the planetary system. One of the least known but most important keys to the Baconian enigma is the third or 1637 edition published in Paris of Les Images ou Tableau de Plate Penture de Deux Philostrates 
so fish days clicks it less statues they call it that's my uh, horrible attempt at French okay uh, but yeah Oh, yeah, so he goes on to say in this book, written in French, by the way, by Sir Francis Bacon, uh, on page 46, appears a plate entitled, okay, showing a gigantic figure shaking a spear, okay, uh, blah, 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 yeah, boring, boring, okay, yeah, the spear shaker thing, uh, I don't know, uh, Okay, well, uh, bearing all that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and take an early, uh, early break here, and then, uh, after this break, uh, we're going to bring on Pat Patrick Marsface and maybe we'll try to uh, rustle up some other people for maybe a weird and wild Tuesday night roundtable. I'm not quite sure yet. We'll see who's on board. I'm going to I'm going to hit up my friends, uh, my special internet Skype friends, and uh, see who wants to come on board tonight. But I know Pat Patrick Marsface will be here on the other side of this break, and uh, we will be back right after. These special words from our sponsors, the Pro Boys. There's no one around except for 